I'm going to stay with you guys' theme on real worship. Can y'all see? Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to stay with the theme on uh, worship, real worship, and that's what we're going to talk about today. And I just kind of want to just share some things about it. Um, you know, we, um, and I'm going to be speaking to everybody, so um, if that's okay, I won't be probably looking at the computer, but y'all can see me. Is that okay? Okay. Okay. Yeah. And so um, when we talk about real worship, a lot of times, well, when we even say the word worship, we're thinking about music, lifting our hands, making a joyful noise unto the Lord, all of these things. But something that the Lord has been dealing with me, I guess, for the last maybe 10 years or since I've been since I was doing the truth behind hip hop and that, that particular message. God has been dealing with me about what real worship is, and I'm learning more and more that worship has, the more I learn, the less worship has to do with music. Um, music is good. I'm a musician myself, and our band is good, and we play good music, but worship and music are not the same thing, and they're not always synonymous with each other. People can make music, and play music and sing about the Lord and not even care about him. It can be people singing for their own glorification to be lifted up, to be um, recognized, or they could be singing because they just sing good. But it doesn't mean that it's worship because worship is much, much deeper than that. And so that's what I want to discuss uh, today. So first thing, worship, it, look at somebody and say, worship is not music. Worship is not music. Now, I like music and I like to worship with music, but worship is not music. Worship happens before the music starts. And then worship happens after the music has stopped. Worship is a posture. Worship is who we are, is, is our, uh, our action without the music or without lifting our hands or making noise or whatever. Singing songs and making melodies is merely an outward expression of what is in a person's heart, right? So when we're making melodies like the Bible says, making melodies unto the Lord, those are gonna reflect what's in our heart. When you're sad, when you feel bad, it's hard to make happy, happy uh, songs, right? You want to sing Precious Lord Take My Hand, which is the saddest song ever written. That, I mean, that song is just depressing. But you want to sing it, and it's not the lyrics. The lyrics are great. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me all, let me stand. It's just that melody. Precious Lord. Take my hand. And everybody just, uh, you start thinking about all your problems. How bad things are. How bad they're going to get. By the end of this song, it's going to be worse. And so, but that has a lot to do with frequency, melody, tonage, using certain notes, and all of those things. And those play a big part in music. Um, and God, let me say this before I go any further. God likes frequency. He likes sounds. He obviously likes music because he made Lucifer a musical being. So his intentions was for us to make melodies and make beautiful sound in music to carry the message, uh, you know, that he would give. That was his intention. Didn't end up that way when it comes to this angel, but... That was his intention. Mark 7 and 6 says, He answered and said unto them, Well, hath Esaias or Elias prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. So this takes it another level. We're not even talking about music, but they, you can honor the Lord with your lips. This means you can even say things and not mean them. 
Your heart could be, and y'all know, because y'all have done it before. You done told somebody something that you didn't mean. But the singing unto the Lord and calling his name. And, you know, when I was growing up, I used to wonder, why are all the super talented people that could just get up and sing and have everybody crying on their knees or whatever, then they leave church and turn into devils? How do they do that? Well, the Bible is saying here, it's making a distinction. Just because a person is calling on the name of the Lord or singing about the Lord or making songs unto the Lord doesn't mean that their heart is in it. So when it comes to worship, our heart has to be in it, right? Now, I like real people. I like real people. And, you know, I don't like to see people during worship that don't lift their hands and that don't sing. I don't like to see that during the, the music worship part. When we have it combined with the music, we call it praise and worship. That's just our word for it. Don't mean it's really worship. We call it praise and worship when we're, you know, doing our songs or whatever. And I like, but I like real people. You know, if you're not feeling it, I don't want you to fake it. But I do want you to feel it. Does that make sense? Yeah, don't be lifting your hands because you're looking around and, oh, oh, I guess I better get my hands up. Don't do that. But something in you, because of the way you've lived, because of what God has done, because of how much you love him, something ought to happen. You ought to feel something. Right? But this passage is telling us that people can fake it and they can honor him with their lips and really not honor him with their heart. So that tells us that worship, look at somebody and say worship is a heart thing. It's definitely a heart thing because here Christ is concerned with the condition of the heart and if you really are worshiping him. So for us to understand where all of this came from, where the standard was set and why folks started behaving this way and all that, we definitely have to deal with him. Lucifer. He got a TV show and everything now. He just won't go away. And he's not going to go away until he's locked in chains and banished to the abyss of nothingness forever. And that's what Jesus is going to do to him. Amen. I know some of y'all will be glad. Some folks won't. They like him. But for us to believe in God, we, I can't wait for evil to finally be over. Amen. And that's what Jesus is going to do with his power. He's going to end Lucifer. Right? I'll give so, y'all the parallel of kind of, you know, what's going on with this angel, what happened in heaven, and where we are today. Um, First thing we're going to talk about is his vanity. Y'all know there's a problem with vanity in the earth, right? Instagram, social media, just everybody taking pictures of themselves. Women looking at other women and hating themselves. Men looking at other women and hating themselves, hating their wives or whatever decision they made. They want their wife to look like something they saw that's not real. Because you've run into the folks on Instagram in person and you walk right by them. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm an online influencer. Well, right now, you ain't influencing nothing. Because, boy, I'm telling you, that, that they can lie on that Instagram. But people get caught up in all of that. Well, all of that is what the devil wants. He wants vanity. The Bible tells us in Ezekiel 28 and 13, Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, and the and gold. Thy workmanship, the workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast thou was created. So this was a beautiful being. He had, I mean, he had jewelry all over him, covered in all of this, and I. I just can't, I, you know, our minds aren't going to let, our 3D minds aren't going to let us understand a four-dimensional, five, whatever dimensional being. He, he was definitely a very high-dimensional being. Um, but it won't let us understand this description. We can just kind of draw it in our minds and see somebody covered in a bunch of jewelry or whatever, like a nugget ring or something. But we can't, 
<laughs> but we'll never understand the depths of this. But this, he was covered in all of that because God wanted him beautiful. And then God wanted him to sound beautiful because he was going to lead the worship. So even the pipes that were in him, everything in him was perfect. God made a beautiful being the way God wanted him to look. Uh, the next verse tells us, thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. And I have set thee so thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Now, this is crazy because when he fell, he wanted to be at the sides of the north, but he was already there before he fell. He wanted to be higher than that. You already on the holy mountain of God. And thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Some say that this is depicting uh, planets uh, or whatever. So, but he just had access to everything. And in 15, thou was what? Perfect. He was a perfect being. Thou were perfect. And you weren't just a perfect being, but he was perfect in his ways from the day that he was created. So this was God's workmanship the way God wanted it. God wanted him beautiful and covered in all of these. Then God wanted him to sound beautiful. And God wanted this to be the leader of the worship. And this, this was uh, uh, the leader of the praise unto him. This is what God wanted. So when he wanted praise, he wanted it to be like this. But iniquity was found in him. And iniquity, we know that's sin, and sin messes everything up, right? Sin messes everything up. So we're gonna let's talk about his desire. I put this, this up here. My greatest pain in life is that I will never be able to see myself perform live. Don't that sound like something the devil would say? That's your greatest pain in life? Didn't your mama pass? But your greatest pain is that you won't be able to see yourself. <laughs> now that's crazy. He said that too. And he still says that. That ain't no old uh, uh, quote. He still says he wishes he could see himself perform. I don't be sitting around wishing I could hear myself preach. Oh, I just wish I could be in the audience. And see myself up there. <laughs> so stupid. I don't even watch myself on video. <laughs> I don't understand. But anyway, iniquity was found in him. And we know Lucifer became Satan, right? So Isaiah 14, 12 through 14 tells us, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart these things. He said, I will ascend into heaven. Now, let's just think. I want y'all to make the parallel as I read these through the desires of modern day artists, modern day singers, modern day worship leaders and different ones. This spirit, you know, I taught about this way back in, man. Part, whatever. Antichrist superstar, probably three. Talked about all of this back then, and things were bad back then, but they weren't, man. Now, I mean, the reason you record an album is to get famous now. Right? And then they hold all of the churches hostage by the churches being forced to sing their stuff. So, Nobody in the church, in church, most churches are writing songs. They're singing the songs that the artists are giving them so that they can be relevant and keep people there. Yeah, and if you don't sing those songs, people will complain. So what does that do to the minister of music of the church or the worship leader of the church? If they have a song on their heart, oh, no, we don't want to hear that. We want to hear the song of the slick dude that sing it. You know, we want to hear his catalog. And the, 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 the dude with the skinny jeans and the... <laughs> yeah, I know how they look. We want to hear that. And so the musicians say, well, then I just need to go lose some weight, get me some skinny jeans and a guitar. And I start leading worship and record my album 
so that they'll want to hear me doing it. And that will legitimate. What is, what is that? Think about that. What is that? That's the devil in the details being able to control what is being sung in the church. Yeah, they're gospel songs, but they have to be funneled through the system and redirected back to the ministry. Thank God we do our own songs here. Amen. We do our own songs. But here are the things that he said. I will do what? Ascend into heaven. Meaning, I'm going to be large even in heaven. I'm about to blow up and be the bomb. He going to blow up. He going to be the bomb too. <laughs> Just not in heaven. <laughs> heaven don't need a bomb amen ain't gonna be no sickness and all that there amen don't be bringing bombs and stuff up <laughs> no nah, bro but he said i will ascend into heaven i will exalt my throne above the stars of god i will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north and then i will ascend above the heights of the cloud and finally and it, I think it's cut off but he said I will be like the most high now you know this has always perplexed me because I never understood how a creation could ever think that he could be like his creator but then years later I would begin to study narcissism and a narcissist has no self-awareness of what he's really doing when he's being narcissistic so in his mind he's much greater than he is yeah you could take a dude that's busted and broke down and jive turkey and everything but he could find a woman and demean her even though he's demeaned he makes her feel less than him and he's trash. But in his mind, he thinks he's something. That's a narcissist. And that's the spirit of Lucifer. Lucifer is nothing. The Bible says when you are nothing and think that you something, you deceive. Well, he is a deceiver. Now, what kind of deceiver are you where you are such a deceiver that you deceived yourself? He really thinks he has a shot at fighting God. He, he really, he's not, listen, he thinks he's going to raise up an army to fight God and he thinks he has a shot. You don't understand that until you understand the mind of a narcissist. And there are many narcissists. I mean, people, that's the spirit that's on most of the men in our day because it takes a strong father to break that spirit off of his son. And if the father isn't strong or if the father isn't in his son's life, the mother, a lot of times, will lift that boy up in his own mind to think that he is more than what he is. She does that to compensate a lot of times for what is lacking with the absence of the father and that's what's creating these dudes that you can't tell nothing to even though they themselves are nothing yeah yeah that's just a narcissist so he says i will be like the most high y'all still with me okay. Now, this is his fall because, of course, you're not going to lift yourself up in heaven where God is in control and not get thumped out. So it, this didn't last long. Once he felt that in his heart, it was time to go. God can't use you. You can't worship God in disobedience. You can't worship God in defiance. That's why it's not singing. That's why it's not music. 
it's the condition of your heart. If your heart is against him, you can't worship him in spirit and in truth. Right? Because you're lying. How do you worship in spirit and truth and you lying? That's not how you feel about him. If you felt that way about him, you would surrender to him. If you felt that way about him, you'd forgive those that you hold in grudges against. If you felt that way about him, you would let folks off the hook and love your brother and sister. If you felt that way about him, but you don't feel that way about it. And so this was the fall, and I believe this is the fall of many churches. Praise leaders, the, mu the whole music industry. You ain't watch the gospel music show now. It's no different than the secular. You in there about to raise your hands and then Snoop Dogg slide on the stage. What is Snoop doing here? I be wanting to just stop. Stop. Why is Snoop Dogg here? At least Kanye West got sense enough not to go. But Snoop will go. <laughs> I don't understand. But gospel artists have wanted to use secular artists for so long to legitimize them and make them feel like they're doing something until they've lost all of the potency that they had in their music. You know how, you got, how much you have to water down your message to get Snoop on your album? You ain't gonna sing about against being a gangster and a thug. You ain't gonna sing against weed. Not being in your right mind. You ain't gonna sing that. You ain't gonna sing against catching a case. You can't do none of that if you got Snoop on your album. That waters the album all the way down just so you can have him on that. Whatever he be doing. You done just sold out. <laughs> you know how much you have to water down your message to be on Nick Cannon's show? Now, Nick Cannon has a comedy, a uh, stand-up comedy video where he is just making fun of Jesus Christ, taking his name all in vain, go, just... And now he's with the gospel artist. Y'all don't think that's the devil? Yeah. The Bible says it like this. Ezekiel 28 and 16. By the multitude of thy merchandise. What time is it? Y'all just yell when you're ready for me to stop. Because I like this. Ezekiel 28 and 16. By the multitude of thy merchandise they have filled the midst of thee with violence and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. So I'm going to block your access, kicking you out. You are no longer my worship leader. Ezekiel 28 and 17, thine heart was filled up because of thy beauty. So here's where the vanity comes in. Because you look so good, it got to you. And that's what happens to man. These gospel boy, they have one album cover. You know, the first album is really them. <laughs> that first photo shoot. <laughs> they, had a, they didn't have the enhancement money. So that first photo shoot, well, I need to stay right there. That first photo shoot is really them. Then album after album, they go to morph, morphing and trans. I mean, you pick up the album, you're like, now who is this? Yeah, because of the vanity, because of their beauty, somebody told them they, not only can you sing, girl, you cute. Yeah, but not just music, just people in general on the internet. All it takes is one person to tell them they're cute, and then they Instagram just change. 
Now every picture is a different side of your head. Then the body. Oh, don't lose a quarter of a pound. A quarter of the pound. You lost a quarter of a pound. And now you done went and bought a tight-fitting, slinky, what you call them, body shaper. You wearing a body shaper on top of your clothes. <laughs> because of your beauty. <laughs> Somebody! Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy, ooh, of thy brightness. By reason of thy brightness. So you just got dumb because of the way people were attracted to you. The way you shined in front of people. You lost sight of who you were doing it for. He said, I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the what? Multitude of thine iniquities. By the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee. And I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. So the great reduction day is going to happen. But you know what? And I was like, Lord, when, yes, I'd be glad when this happened, whatever. And the Lord spoke to me and told me, he said, this is, it, it's, some of it has happened. When Jesus died and they were gathered in the upper room, when Jesus rose and they were gathered in the upper room, he told them and said, hey, y'all wait. I'm going to send the comfort of the Holy Ghost. They gathered together. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. When they were filled with this power, it resonates with a lot going on here. He's cast to the ground by the power of God. In other words, he can't stop anything that God wants to do. He, he doesn't have the ability to hinder God's plan at all. So the power God has given us Causes us to look at him and say, you know what, devil? You can't stop anything. As a matter of fact, I'm going to make some music to God because you can't do it anymore. Anything you play, anything you sing, anything you write. Oh, I feel the power of God. You can't sing it to God anymore. Do you know that gives us power? Do you know how mad that makes the devil? That's why he want to raise up a Kanye West or people like that so they can take the secular songs and change the words so that we, you know, it's a love song written by Genuine. And, he, <laughs> and they want to take those words and put gospel words on it and then offer that up to the Lord. That keeps the devil involved. Well, yeah, I, I wrote that one. I inspired that one. Yeah, that was my idea. No, 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 no. I have a new song. Sing unto the Lord a new song. I got a song the angels can't sing. Remember that old song? God gave me a song that the angels could not sing. Y'all remember that? I've been washed in the blood. Of the crucified. Let's see, I do elder would know it. Yeah, this angels can't sing that. I got a song the devil can't write. I don't care how many beats, and I don't care what he got. I can sing something that he can't sing. Amen. So that's his fault. So what happened when he fell? God replaced him. Look at somebody and say, you're his replacement. This is why the devil hates you. This is why he comes after you. This is why he thinks all day and night about how he can destroy you. This is why after you pray him off of one situation, you look up, he's after another situation. This is why he's relentless and will, just won't leave you alone until he's dead. 
It's because you are his replacement. Do you know what that means? The first thing it means is that he'll never get his place back. You know when you're replaced, you're replaced. You know what that feels like? I get a testimony all the time when I was 17 and I like the food with my band director and I was going to hurt him. I was one of the best drummers in the country. But I told him, I'm, I'm going to end this band. And I quit that band and we had a, they used to call them assemblies. We had an assembly at the school. Somebody was coming to, I don't know what they were doing, blood drive something. And they wanted the band to play. I was like, uh-huh. Get up there and play without a drum. Man, they pulled them curtains back and I heard them drums. I was like, <laughs> and he was good and he was just almost like I could hear nothing else but him and I think he was looking at me <laughs> twirling his sticks <laughs> man I sat in that audience something happened to me y'all I was transformed something, my heart something happened it just the anguish I felt because I got replaced now I was 17 and I promised my freckle faced self I said this will never happen again I will never think of myself that highly again because that hurt that hurt so imagine how the devil feels every day he wakes up and knows his songs are garbage. His jewels are gone. Every time a church opens up and they start the music up, that's why the devil says, I'm joining the choir. I'm going to be the church musician. He want to get in there because he wants his place back because every day of his life till eternity he has to deal with the fact that he got replaced God said let us make man in whose image the devil was made in God's image he says well, I'm not not only am I going to replace you but I'm going to upgrade it yeah I'm going to upgrade and make a man in my image after what? Our likeness. And let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowls of the air, the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. The devil got replaced and he got replaced with a good, this, y'all know we're God's best creation? You know how I know that? Look what God is going to do for us. Look what he did for us. Jesus didn't die for angels. He didn't die for any other being. He gave his life for his mo God's most precious creation to redeem us back so we can be with him. And not just be with him now, be with him forever. Do you know how much he loves us? And do you know how mad that makes the devil? So the devil said, uh-oh, he made a replacement. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to infiltrate the worship, the music, the church. We're going to infiltrate the hearts of these so-called beloved people of God. And down through the years, this is what the devil has done. And all the devil can do is influence. He can't stop anything. Because Jesus rose with the power of death, hell, and the grave, 
All the devil can do is influence. That's why they call internet and social media folks influencers. And that's who he works through. Now, there are some positive influencers. Uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, I'm an influence, I guess. But for the most part, the major ones with the millions and millions of followers, they are to push the devil's agenda into the hearts of people with influence. Oh, but I just said the devil can't stop me. If the folk that's in here are blessed by the word, he lost. Amen. You know what? He was lost when I was preparing it because I was blessed by it. Look at somebody and say, the devil can't stop. Not that. Man, do you know ABC wouldn't even be here if the devil could stop something? Because he has tried everything he could. Look at somebody say, and we still here. Lord, we just thank you, God. We come against every demonic power, principality. We just come against it, believing, Father God, that what you want to speak will be spoken. In the name of Jesus. Too much has already been said anyway. So we consider the enemy a failure in the name of Jesus. All right, so the devil tried to come up with a plan to stop God's precious creation, which we are. And you ought to look at yourself every morning and say, God, I'm your creation. You know what happens over time? We start thinking about all the mistakes we made, how people feel about us, what folks have said, all of the down. People have talked down to us. We think about the jobs we may have lost, the money we don't have, whatever, whatever has happened. We think about those things and we begin to measure ourselves based on those things. But those are societal things. God doesn't see us that way. You know how God sees us? God sees us and said, man, if they would only trust me. Amen. They would be exactly what I want them to be and all they got to do is trust me. You go to the Lord, Lord, I'm just, I'm just, and God is like, no. I made you the way I wanted you to be. Now trust me with it. And that's all you have to do. But the devil keeps talking in your ear and talking down to you and all these things. But here are the ways that the devil has brought his influence into the worship or the music or just us giving God praise. All of those things. Here's how he has infiltrated. Amen. Lucifer tried to use his ability to get affirmed rather than just operating in his ability. So if you have a talent you have an ability, you use it for God. Operate in it, but don't use it to get affirm affirmation. Yeah. You don't use it for attention. You don't use it to be validated. He wanted to be seen and known for what God had given him instead of what he could give God. Now think about that. He wanted to be seen and known with all the jewelry and the pipes and woo, boo, 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 boo. I don't know how he sounded. But he was just doing his thing and God gave you all of that. Now how are you going to get arrogant and God gave you that? I don't understand arrogant musicians. Now I've grown up around musicians all my life. I don't understand like how are you arrogant when anybody can do that? Yeah. Look at that, see? Uh, anybody. Anybody. I could play like anybody if I put the time in. I don't want to play like everybody. I ain't putting the time in. So you, you're not special just because you have an ability. Anybody could sing. Look at somebody. No, oh, you born. That's a gift. No, it's not. You learned that. Nobody just jump up. Let two parents that can't sing at all have a child that can sing. That don't happen. 
there was music somewhere in the pipeline. Yeah. And they were singing when they were young and they were singing all along. And we see them and think, wow, but we don't know they practiced. Yeah, so anybody can do it. So there, there can't be any arrogant. Lucifer learned that the hard way. Bruh, you're fired, and now I'm about to create millions and millions to do your job. Yeah, so anybody. So you can't be arrogant with what God gives you because he only lent it to you anyway. Amen? And what we offer him as a talent and an ability, anyone can offer it. So the devil wanted to be seen and known for what God had given him instead of what he could give God. I tell people all the time because they say that the Lord gave me this song. That's not really true. Matter of fact, God don't want to give you a song. He wants you to give him a song. Amen. One of his favorite people in the Bible was Moses. And after Moses, after they defeated Pharaoh and they all drowned in the Red Sea, what did Moses do? He wrote a song. And they began to sing it. Unto the Lord. That's why God made us. Because we have abilities that we can offer to him. That are unique. The devil uses sin to cause us to do the opposite of what God wants from us. God wants us to be faceless and totally reflective of him not ourselves. Now, these are what the jewels were for. What, these are what the jewels were for. Jewels, jewelry, that was, those are reflective things. So they would take the light of God into those jewels and shine them into the congregation. This is why he built him like that. So that he would reflect the light or be a reflector of the light of God. But he upgraded the model with us and just made us like him in his likeness we are his jewelry we are his reflection we are light reflectors when we act like him talk like him speak his word we are reflecting God that's why he said you are the light of the world and you are the salt of the earth God wants us to be faceless and totally reflective of him, not ourselves. But sin causes us to, and all of these things, this is why God don't like sin. And this is why you can't make sin a habit. When you have habitual sins, you create situations that create dysfunction, that create the things that the devil wants. The first thing the devil wants is for us to always consider ourselves. He wants you selfish. Jesus said, if any man come to me, he must first do what? Deny. Deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. But the devil wants you to first consider yourself. What are people going to think? What are they going to say? What do they think about? People don't like me. How do you do something to make people like me? That's what sin does. Yeah, because if you stay in sin, you're going to get down on yourself. When you get down on yourself, you're going to have to do something to lift yourself up. Can I preach the gospel to you? The next thing he makes you, the next influence that Lucifer had was he makes the desire, uh, he makes us desire greatness to overcome insecurity. And so he causes us to desire greatness to overcome insecurity. So these are, these are the people that want to be something in this life. They're doing that to overcome insecurity. How do you get insecurity? Dysfunction. How do you get dysfunction? Because somebody was sinning. I know I'm preaching. Somebody see it. Masquerade. He wants us to masquerade as something we are not. Yeah. What a worship leader up trying to be Whitney Houston. You're not her. Then he wants us to seek after opportunities to be seen. Like him. Then he wants us to put our own desires before God's desires. 
And that's where sin always leads. You'll start making an excuse for sin. You'll start making sin okay with God. He understands. And here's what artists and singers and stuff do. They believe because of what they do for people, because of what they do for the church, because of what they do, worship and music and all of that, God owes them that. He owes them forgiveness. He owes them, you know, he'll allow them to have a little something, something on the side. Yeah. Oh, they've told me that. <laughs> yeah. No, no, that's you putting your own desire before God's desires. And that's what got the devil kicked out. We good? Satan wants his place back. Most famous gospel icons are controlled by secular companies. When you sign a record deal, you're controlled by a secular company. Meaning that God's music has to be funneled through the will of a secular company. Most of the music in our churches is owned by devil worshiping executives. So devil worshipers got together and decided what your church should be singing. Can I preach in here? Now talent goes much farther than anointing. Now musical ability qualifies you for ministry. Soon as your album not selling, they start a church. They get a preaching itinerary. Brother, will you shut up and sing? Nobody want to hear you try to preach. Then they preach, but they singing all in the preaching. Because folks will be asleep if they keep that preaching happening. They look around, everybody go. But God! Everybody wake up, oh, that is. That's what we came for because you a singer. <laughs> yeah, so now musical ability qualifies you for ministry people are seeking after callings and purpose rather than seeking the kingdom of God the Bible said seek ye first the kingdom of God and what see see that's the thing let me point that out they seek the kingdom of God but don't want to live right you got to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's why you can't just make up your mind on how you want to be. You got to be the way God says. Amen? Amen. So people are seeking after callings and purpose rather than seeking the kingdom of God first. This is Satan's interception into mankind to stop us. You know what he's really doing? He's really making us like he was. So we'll get kicked out. Yeah. Don't nobody ever want to want to leave by themselves. We know that from this church, right? <laughs> Y'all know. <laughs> you know, I don't have to get up and make an announcement of who left. You gonna hear from them. What you doing? Can we come over to your house? We just want to explain why we left the church. But yeah, but that the devil misery. You know, that's an old saying. Misery loves company, right? So the devil wants company. He wants company. And finally, people condone antichrist behaviors for the sake of promotion and fandom. So we'll put up with witchcraft if the person is famous. Yeah. Yeah, you go get their autograph and they worship the devil. But you're excited because they're in your favorite movie. Come in church, preacher preaching, and there's no eyes on the preacher. Everybody looking at Denzel walking through the door. Ooh, 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 ooh what? <laughs> the Rock is in here. Ooh, 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 ooh. See, 
let's keep going. Let's keep, let's keep going. Some of y'all need to repent. So in order, all of this, this is the one thing that the devil didn't do that he had to do to worship God. We must be what? Obedient, Obedient to worship. The Bible tells us in this story that Abraham worshiped God with nothing but pure obedience. What no organ grinder walking up the mountain with him. Wasn't a harmonica player sitting behind the rock that Isaac was laid on. Wasn't no keyboard player over by the thicket where the ram was caught. Wasn't nobody trying to blow in the ram's horn while he was caught in the thicket. <laughs> None of that. No. Wasn't no music. And Abraham wasn't walking up the mountain singing. But the Bible said Abraham rose up early in the morning. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And finally, Abraham said unto the young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will do what? Go yonder and what? We're going to worship. What is the worship? Obedience. Are we going to go do what God said? That is worship. Amen? Amen? And finally, Jesus illustrates true worship. Jesus is the image of true worship. Jesus never promoted himself, but did just the opposite. Philippians tell us, but made himself of what? He wasn't looking for the folks. He wasn't looking for the fanfare. When he showed up, he showed up riding a donkey. So he didn't care about his reputation. The Bible said he took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Now Jesus could have lit the sky up with his shine. But he wasn't concerned about that. He's the illustration of true worship. Jesus never called anyone that desired to be exalted. He went and looked for those that did not want to be something. Luke 14 and 11. For whosoever is exalted, whosoever exalted himself shall be abased. But he that what? Humbled himself shall be what? Exalted. Jesus, and this is what musicians, this is what pastors need to do. You don't need to go find somebody to grow your church because they want to be famous. Lead your worship and they're on a mission to be known and seen. Jesus would not show power on the man or allow himself to be lifted up in the flesh. This is true worship. We aren't to look, we aren't to show ourselves as something. In this life. Luke 4 and 8. And Jesus answered and said unto him. Get thee behind me Satan. For it is written. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. And him only shall thou serve. Now do y'all know Jesus could have killed him? <laughs> but Jesus didn't want to use his power. He, well he didn't want to waste his power. I know he wanted to look at him and say, man, you already defeated. They ain't told you. <laughs> you know all this word. That same word you know says that you're defeated. <laughs> Jesus avoided. Oh, why we can't be like Jesus? Why are we looking for likes and views? Man, folks will jump off a building with leather wings that they made. To try to get some likes and views. Risk their life for some comments and some hearts. Yeah, go live on the freeway. Watch me cross it. <laughs> 
and then in hell, lift up their eyes. <laughs> but Jesus avoided fame. Mark 7 and 30, 60, and he charged them that they should tell no man. But more he charged them so much, the more a great deal they published it. So the more Jesus said, don't tell nobody, the Bible said they kept telling it. That's why you don't have to go after it. If it's worth getting, God will send it out. And I can say that. I've never had to promote anything we've done. Ever. Never hired a publicist. Never went to anybody's page and posted what I'm doing. That's rude to me. So I've never done that. Never had to... Uh, to pay to get my name high on the rankings in Google and I don't fool with the internet like that we've never done it never put our stuff in stores and call stores to uh, and you've never seen a commercial come on TV <laughs> the truth behind hip hop is available <laughs> all you gotta do is go to exministries.com <laughs> we don't have no billboards and passing out flyers and we don't promote anything this church grew to this size Hidden. Our old building didn't even have a sign. Because I believe that if God wants it, he'll blow on it. But his blowing is directional. It'll go where it needs to go. Jesus lived a life of worship unto God because he sought to be the very what? Reflection of God. All the devil had to do was keep being the reflection of God. You were created to shine the light of God onto the congregation. And he wanted to shine himself. But Jesus lived a life of worship to reflect God. John 14 and 9, Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me? Philip, he that has seen me has seen who? Father. The Father. So how says thou show us the Father? He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Because I'm the reflection of the Father. And finally, I'm going to end with this scripture, Philippians 2 and 8. And being found in fashion as man, he did what? Humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Y'all, that's ultimate worship. He became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And because this was the ultimate worship, it came with the ultimate reward. Wherefore God also hath lightly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Every name. Listen, every name that there ever be and every name that there ever was, he's above it. Because he humbled himself and obeyed the will of God. That at that name, Jesus, how many knees going to bow? So not only do, <laughs> not only are you above every name, but everything with the name is going to bow <laughs> of the things in heaven and things in earth and even under the earth. And every tongue, how many tongues? Anything with a tongue is going to confess that Jesus is Lord and this is to the glory of God the Father. That is ultimate worship. Praise the name of the Lord.